All right, so we're over at the bench, and this right here is a working data drive. Well, it works, but it doesn't work. It's got some issues inside. Circuit-wise, as my little thing says back here, bad jerks, works, stays running. So, but I'm, I'm using this one here because I want to show you something. First, I'm going to pop off the cover, open it up, take and flex this gently up to get it off there. Do the same on this side. And that's all. What I want to show you is that right there. That's the encoder or indexing wheel. This is what spins and inside, you can almost see it here and you'll see it better once we get it apart. Inside there's a little grate that runs through a light sensor and as it spins it toggles things on and off and the circuitry uses that to break the signal up into bits. So I want to show you this is a working one. Well, not a working one per se. It works, but it don't work. That's what a non-melted encoder wheel looks like. And this one was sent to me to get repaired. It's the same system, same design. There's two different designs and you can tell, well, there's three different designs inside, but two different design cases. One design has screws. Another design has a clip that locks it in place. And unfortunately, they're not really interchangeable. So this one I'm going to pop off here. And you can see immediately that rubber wheel is gone. It's actually melted. You see, this ain't moving. As it sat, the rubber decomposed and slowly melted down inside the system. And depending on how the system was laid when it melted, it could have melted down in here and we only have a little bit of rubber down here holding things in place. Or if the system was on its back and it melted down, it's all over the grating. So we're gonna have to take that apart and fix it. And to do that, we would flip the cover over, or flip the drive over, remove the four screws on the back with a Phillips screwdriver. Some of these, and I apologize ahead of time, my hand will get in the way occasionally as I'm doing this. Some of these data drives will have a plastic clip here holding this in place that you have to pop out with a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. Some don't. This one doesn't. So we're gonna open this one up here. Take those four screws, put them over here in the holder. Come on, there we go. Now, this will slide off the back, work our way through here. This is actually, it looks like it's one of the later versions, or it could be the beginning version. I did some, a, a, basically a Facebook Messenger chat interview with one of the senior engineers that designed the data drive, which I'm gonna be posting some of that within this video either i don't know if i'm going to do it as a pop-up or by the time you're watching this i'll know but i'm not sure exactly how i want to show it but there was three different versions of this that i've seen so far i've got about 100 data drives that i've destroyed i say destroyed pulled apart repaired put back together and there's various versions the nicest version is this one in that all the wires are held together with clips then there's a version where some of the wires are not clips connected some of the wires are held with connectors some are soldered. Then there's a version where everything's soldered. The soldered ones are a pain in the neck. This is new. I haven't seen that. So let me reach down here into my tools, get my scissors out, and let's get rid of this little clip here. I haven't seen one like that yet, but that could have been somebody did it after the fact because they were afraid the wires are coming to come out. Come out of the way, clip. Get out of the way. We'll put you back. All right, so now what we do is Remove these three screws. These hold the two circuit boards together and the RF shielding. On my personal data drives that I use for duplicating and creating data and creating data packs, I've removed these RF shields because first off, I really don't care if anybody watches or watches listens to AM radio anymore. It's gotten really bad. And it helps the drive run a little cooler because it doesn't have something holding all the heat in. At least in my experience it is. And since these drives are 
getting harder and harder to come by working. I don't want mine to fail if I can help it. So let's get this RF shield out of the way. It's a little difficult to work when I got the camera right in front of me, but RF shield out of the way. Now this lifts up here. I could unhook this stuff here too. And you know what? I'm going to get out of the way. Just remember which way it goes back when you put it back together, Millie. Really. There's another RF shield underneath. Let's get that one out of the way. This right here. See how this thing's hooked up? Green, black, blue, blue. Let's just remember how they go. Actually, do I have... No, I don't have a marker. I'm just going to have to remember how they go. So I'll unplug them for now. I can always look back on the video if I have to. Get that out of the way. This is the circuit board. You notice how they took the circuit board and they bent it to compress it into one board. It's actually a pretty nice compact design. I've got some of these that are really bad shapes. This is another problem too. Some of them, this little membrane falls apart and ruins the drive. So here we got the mechanicals of it. The two motors, they run at low and high speed. They keep the tape tense all the time. This right here is a sensor that senses when a tape is or a data pack is inserted. I'm going to push the button here. See, real simple mechanical thing. And this right here is where the encoder wheel is hiding inside there. So we have to take that apart and get that out. And will this screwdriver work? Yeah. Unscrew that. These are going to be hard to clean in here on the camera. So, come on. I probably should use a smaller screwdriver for that. If you're wondering what I'm doing with the screws, you hear it making noise occasionally. My wife got these crafts and they came in these little wooden cases. They make great sorters. All right, so I moved the two screws. Right here, underneath here, is the sensor. That's where the wires go in. This is normally held to the case, the bottom case, by double-sided tape. So you just gotta be careful getting this out. You don't wanna rip this thing out because you can destroy things, especially little grating in there. So I'm just putting a little pressure on it, little lifting pressure, see how it's slowly coming loose. I wanna get it out without destroying anything. I don't want nothing to break. Wiggling, wiggling slowly. See that? You may not be able to see it, but I am wiggling it slowly out. Seems like it's sticking in spots. Yeah, there we go. Now it's out. See all that gunk? That's the rubber that was holding it together. See in there? Looks like the grating may have gotten messed up on that one. We're going to see if we can clean that off. Sometimes you can still run it missing a couple of the little fine gratings in there it'll still run it may run it may miss this every now and again have to rewind to do it it's got error checking in it All right now this right here is the sensor and I said it's double-sided tape normally you can move that like that and it comes off out of the way now what we got here this is where I need my tweezers and I don't have them here so let me go get my tweezers okay I'm back with the tweezers now, floating around in here, it, it, again, it's going to be difficult to see. Maybe if I zoom in a little bit. See those little washers right there? We need them. There's two of them. Sometimes there's only one, sometimes two. There's actually three on that one. I don't know. Trick to picking them up, take your finger. Wet it with your tongue. Makes things stick to it. Okay, now we have those washers out. The next thing I need to do is right inside here, there's the axle. See the axle right there? Pull that out. Now you notice things are starting to move around in here. Now I can take this section out. See how it, the rubber melted and just glued to everything? This is not too bad. What I now need to do is I'm going to need to soak this in isopropyl alcohol for a few hours. And that causes that rubber to really soften up. And I could pull it apart and then clean it. So let's set that there. And you can see down in here, all the other gunk. That I get in there with a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol and clean it up. See how far it's going up here? It's up there. It's there. 
It's a mess. So I'm gonna get set up to start cleaning that and we'll start recording again. Okay, so what we got now is I went and got a little container for the isopropyl alcohol. I'm gonna use 91% isopropyl, IPA as some people call it. I'm gonna just pour enough to cover everything in there, just like that. And I'm gonna take this grating and all and just set it in there. Let that thing stew for a while. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my isopropyl alcohol again and some Q-tips. And I'm gonna get up in here and I'm gonna clean this out really good. See that stuff in there? Let's get all this out. This is, I had worse. I have had ones where they had chunks come out. So this is not too bad. That little section right there, that little indent, that's where the light sensor goes. That's where the double-sided sticky tape's gonna go. When I first started doing these, repairing these a few years ago, I used, because I didn't think a double-sided sticky tape at the time, I used some crazy glue to hold that light sensor in place, and it worked great. I don't know what happened to those data drives. I do apologize in advance to anybody who in the future got that drive on a computer I rebuilt, and it fails, and they have to take it apart because it's not going to come apart. But, learning lesson, I did not realize that double-sided sticky tape would work good. So, that's cleaned out. I got all the buildup out of there, as you can see. Now this one right here, I gotta do the same on here. So, some more alcohol. See the chunks just sitting there? Fingernail will get out too. Get the chunks of dried up rubber, and it's underneath my finger. Probably could use something else to save my fingernail, I don't know. But let's get all that chunks out of there. Let's get this nice and cleaned up. Yeah, I had a, I, I put out a message on one of the Facebook boards on the Coleco Adam page to all the people that are on there. Saying that I wanted to repair a data drive in one of my videos. And if you had one floating around, ship it to me and I'll fix it. Because I was thinking, you know, I fixed all the ones I have and any ones I have left that aren't fixed, they just ain't getting fixed. They're in just such bad shape. There are just spare parts like the boneyard. So I thought to myself, I need to buy me some stuff on eBay so I have some things to work with. Then I said, wait a minute. Let me see if anybody has one that they want fixed. So I asked around and yes, somebody did. All right. One last thing, take the clean and the Q-tip. I just want to clean off the head here, make sure there's no gunk buildup. Now, you're saying to yourself, but Millie, why are you putting yourself through all this? You don't even know if this works. Odds are, and these are good odds too, odds are if that is melted, the drive still works. If on the other hand, that is not melted, there's a chance the drive don't work. You know what I mean? Because nobody used it or it failed on them. So yeah, odds are, that don't work, the, that's melted, drive still works inside because somebody stopped using it after it melted or it just sat forever melted. There's other things you can do too. I've had data drives come in where, that uh, fixed where the motors are shot, they don't go very fast. You can remove them, three screws, pull them out. If they have clip connectors, you can put them on. Otherwise, just watch the polarity, the black and the red, and just replace it with another one that works. You can do the same with the read write head I've had some where they won't read they run great but they just will not read or will not write I removed the read write head and again if it has this connection it's great if not you can wire it together solder it tape it put it all back together so these are fixable I have never let me get this here I've never actually taken one of these apart and fixed these yet because technically I don't know where to start it looks like we might have a little bit of gunk on that I mean, I really just don't know where to start on fixing these because the schematics for them are a mess. There is no real detailed logic of telling me how they work. So, I R and R, repair and replace, or remove and replace. Now that's clean, that's ready to go. This right here, 
Have we softened up enough to where I can get you apart? I don't want to force it, but see how it's starting to slowly come off there? Let it soak a little bit longer. All right, so let's just see if it's been sitting long enough. It appears that it has. All right, so it's separating. Uh, see that mess there? That's not good. So what we got to do is we want to try to clean it. I'll take a piece of white paper, put it down here. I'm going to start with this piece first. One side's clean, it's the other side's messy. See that? Let's see if I can do some of this uh, releasing up. Try not to go sideways because you will rip the grating. Don't look like it's going to come off yet. Looks like I may have to let it soak longer. Try the other one. I have a replacement if I need to, but they're getting scarce. As you can see, this is a good example right here. You can see that grating. See the, the little grating right there along with the wheel spinning. I guess it caused maybe a refraction pattern or something. It, it changes the light level going through the sensor. And that's how it detects and knows. So let's try to clean this mess up without touching that grating. Again, I'm going to... If you use my fingernails by doing this, careful. See how that thing slid up there? That's not good. You don't want to break it. I'm not near the grating right now, so I'm not too concerned, but again, I don't want to break it. Get this excess off of here, then I'll put it back into the rubber. Yeah, rubber. The rubbing it. Rubber. Alcohol, rubbing alcohol. There we go. So what I'm doing is I'm slowly scraping this off. Being very careful not to go near the grating if I can help it. All right, got that off there to stick to the paper and that piece right there keeps one lift up but that's gonna be okay and this side over here there's nothing on it. it's dirty but there's nothing on it so back in there let it soak for a bit clean the paper off let's see what I can do with this one now this is hard because I don't want to lean down on this because I can break it so I gotta be very careful how I'm doing this See, it's coming up slowly. There are no spares for this anywhere. The only way you're going to get a spare is by taking another one apart. And odds are, the one you're taking apart is going to have it ruined. You can see some of this grating is missing in there. That's not good. But we may salvage this still. I got to come on this side. Try to get some of this off. There may be some solvent I could use that would dissolve this better, but yep. I don't know if you can see it, but see that? It's ruined. That's not salvageable. At that point, that is ruined. So I'm going to take one of it. See that? Yeah, this is a ruined one. So we can't salvage this one. So I'm going to take one out of another setup that I have that doesn't work, and I'm going to put it into here.